everyone! In this video, you'll learn about the thinnest and rarest radioactive foil, one square centimeter of which can cost as much as several tens or even hundreds of thousands of euros. I think you cannot imagine the modern world without this attribute. I'm talking about aluminium foil, which we have been using for 100 years for keeping our food warm and also as a great wrapping material. The word foil signifies a metal which is rolled into a very thin sheet at a factory. Today the average thickness of foil is 200 of a millimeter. Initially it was tin that was used instead of aluminium to produce foil because tin is easier to obtain than aluminium. However, tin foil would give food a particular odor, which is why it was substituted by a lighter and more inert metal, aluminium. In order to learn all the secrets of manufacturing foil from different rare metals, I visited one laboratory at the GSI Center in Germany. Here, scientists make the most expensive and unusual foil in the world, which is later used in accelerators for obtaining even more expensive and rare super heavy transuranium elements. First, let us look at the gold foil, which is also manufactured here. It is manufactured using an old method, which is called cold pressing. Bits of gold are flattened under the pressure of stainless steel rollers. Gold is a very malleable and inert metal, which doesn't get oxidized when treated mechanically. As a result, an extremely thin foil can be made, being just 5 micrometer thick, which is about 50 times thinner than a regular aluminum foil. Such a foil is used to assemble such cases which are irradiated in heavy iron accelerators. Ions of different metals, for instance calcium ions, are propelled to 10% the speed of light and bombard the gold foil atoms, creating new chemical elements and their isotopes. In order to make an even thinner foil, at the same time retain its firmness, workers in this laboratory use carbon Graphite is applied to a sheet of glass with the help of a vacuum coater. A heated graphite rod sends a stream of carbon atoms, which later deposit onto the glass, which is coated in a water-soluble layer. When dipped into water, the carbon layer, which is just 100 nanometers thick, flows to the surface. The thickness of this graphite is 50 times smaller than that of regular aluminum foil. That is why such a material is handled very carefully. Such an ultra-thin graphite foil floating in water can be stuck on a steel frame and then used as a base, onto which other metals or their compounds can be sprayed. For instance, another machine can spray bismuth oxide onto such a graphite base and then it can be used in a particle accelerator. In this laboratory, graphite is the most frequently used foil, because it is the cheapest and easiest material to process. Still, to make the rarest and more expensive foil, we need to use a material that is harder and lighter, for instance titanium. At this laboratory, these roller press machines are used to make not only gold foil, but also thin titanium foil, being just 2 to 3 micrometers thick. Here, this metal is used as a base coating, and it is coated in other elements, for instance, in rare earth metals or radioactive metals. For instance, this sample of a titanium foil coated in Europe, a very expensive and active rare earth sample. Such a small piece of foil, with production cost included, is valued 500 euros. But that price is relatively low compared to a very expensive radioactive foil, for instance uranium foil. In the neighboring laboratory, scientists flatten bits of depleted uranium 289 using the same roller press machines used for flattening gold. However, 
in case of uranium, everything is in an inert atmosphere in order for people not to inhale toxic and radioactive uranium powder. Manufactured uranium foil is 20 micrometer thick, which is the same thickness as that of aluminium foil. That is so because uranium is not malleable enough to be rolled thinner. As a safety measure, this press machine is operated by two workers. If one worker's glow gets stuck in the press machine, the other worker will be able to stop the machine. Metallic uranium is a radioactive metal and easily gets oxidized in the air. That is why it is coated in a thin layer of graphite, being just 10 of nanometers thin, to protect it from oxidation. Taking into account the cost of safety measures and how expensive uranium is, one such frame with uranium foil can cost up to several thousand euros. However, the most expensive foil possible to make is made of the most expensive metals, for instance from California, one gram of which cost 60 million dollars. This metal is less to be obtained into macro quantities that is, quantities visible to the naked eye. Other metals are too radioactive or simply evaporate because of self-heating. There are just two places in the world where this insanely expensive metal is extracted, in Oak Ridge National Laboratory in the USA and in Dmitrovgrad, Russia. There can be made only three tenths of gram of this metal yearly in the world. It is synthesized in a reactor when curium or plutonium are bombarded with neutrons. After this metal was synthesized, tiny amounts of this metal are delivered to the city of Mainz in Germany to make foil. Here, californium is made into an oxide and with the help of electrochemical deposition is applied to a titanium foil and then coated in a thin carbon layer to prevent oxidation. Of course, I was not allowed to film this process, but Californium foil will be very similar to this yttrium coated foil. If there was a Californium film on it, its price would easily exceed 100,000 euros for just several micrograms of Californium. When it is sent to the accelerator, because of californium strong radioactivity, such a foil is opened inside a separate chamber, which traps radioactive dust. Later, all suits and gloves, which workers were handling this metal, are disposed of using special radioactive waste containers. So, why all this spending, you might ask? All of this is essential for fundamental research in which this foil is bombarded with a stream of heavy ions in an accelerator. Foil itself is mounted onto a spinning wheel, which when spinning distributes heat more evenly and doesn't let a stream of light particles burn through such an expensive foil. For instance, in 2012, scientists from GSI irradiated a Californium foil with titanium ions, trying to synthesize a new element 120. Unfortunately, their attempt was unsuccessful, and there was no fusion of atoms. But this is the reason why such institutes exist, to make new discoveries by trial and error. That is why next time when you buy aluminum foil in a shop, just think how much money you save by not buying exclusive uranium foil instead, which costs thousands of euros. If this video was useful for you, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to learn more new and interesting.